Hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. My friends, I'm having a wonderful day, but at the same time, my heart is troubled. I'm greatly disturbed uh, at the things that are going on over in Israel and in Gaza. Now, the Bible says this. The Bible says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Psalms 122 and verse 6. One of the most powerful passages of scripture that, uh, that uh, uh, has influence on American foreign policy. I thank God for the nation of Israel. I believe uh, everything that the Bible says about the nation of Israel. And I believe that America will be blessed and will stay strategically important in the world as long as America maintains its proper allegiance with Israel. I want to give a great big shout out and a great big word of appreciation uh, to our president, President Joe Biden, in his speech, uh, talking about the atrocities and the attack that took place uh, uh, on uh, Israel uh, on last Saturday, uh, he said this, amongst other things, as they were attacked by Hamas, uh, a, a terrorist organization that exercised barbarous tactics, wicked tactics. These people seem to be ruthless as little children, little babies were beheaded. Can you believe that? Babies beheaded, women killed, uh, pe people, civilians targeted and attacked. And in most cases, when war takes place, you know, military fights military. Enlisted fights the enlisted. But Hamas has uh, has uh, strategically targeted uh, civilians. And over last count that I heard, over 1,200 dead Israeli civilians, civilians and soldiers and 25 to 26 American citizens have lost their lives. And my friends, the sad thing is this thing is just getting started. But listen, I appreciate these words from the president of the United States. He said, like every nation in the world, Israel has the right to respond, indeed has a duty to respond to these vicious attacks. You know, many times when Israel is attacked, what the rest of the world says to Israel is, be measured with your response. Or after the attack of an enemy, the rest of the world begins to cry for peace. Well, you can't do that. You've got to take the gloves off and allow Israel to defend itself. And I am praying for Israel. I am uh, in support of Israel and their right to uh, defend themselves. And tonight, my friends, I am going to show you in the scripture where the God of the Bible is not done with Israel. Uh, I'm telling you, whether it's Hezbollah uh, uh, in the West Bank or Hamas, in Gaza, it doesn't matter. Uh, PLO, it doesn't matter. ISIS, which was practically obliterated under the Trump administration, you name it. When you go against Israel, you go against God. And I want to say to the number one state sponsor of terrorism, Iran, you will not destroy Israel because the God of this book is on the side of that nation and the plans that God has for Israel, that God spoke of when he spoke to Abraham back in the day <laughs> in Genesis chapter number number 12 and Genesis uh, chapter number 11 where we get the genealogy of Abram and chapter 12 and so forth and so on. I want you to know that the God of the Bible has not changed his mind. As a matter of fact, I said to Brother Gary, when you read the eschatological scriptures, when you read about the last days, you don't read about America. 
but you certainly do read about Israel and you read about Jerusalem and, and, uh, and you read about God's hand and God fighting for Israel and Jerusalem. And the day will come, my friends, when there will be a new Jerusalem, a new heaven and a new earth. But until then, we're going to have to pray uh, for the nation of Israel. And, uh, and, and, and uh, thank you, President Biden, for those words. Now, I pray that in addition to those words, uh, and I and I believe this, I believe this, that we are making strategic moves uh, to assist Israel in what, my friends, uh, may be a bloody, ongoing battle for quite some time. Uh, the Gaza Strip is, uh, as you've heard on the news, one of the most, if not the most, densely populated uh, areas in the world, if not the most densely populated area in the world. But at least Israel have said to the Palestinian civilians who live in the Gaza Strip, who live there, Israel has sent them a warning and have said to them, leave. The Israelis got no such warning. The Israelis were attacked. They came by air. They came by water. They came by land and they, uh, by tanks and, uh, uh, oh my, uh, hang gliders and all of that. Yes. They attacked women, children, men, uh, 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 families, civilians, uh, and military and caught Israel totally off guard. But I'll tell you what, I believe that God is with them and based on what I've read in this book, and I'll be talking about it tonight, I'm telling you that they are going to prevail. No nation will will wipe Israel off the map because the God of the Bible, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, have made promises and have said things about this nation. And God cannot lie. None can stay his hand and none can say to him, what doest thou? What a mighty God we serve. Now, my friends, I'm going to say something that will sound like a little boasting, uh, uh, a little self. I want to make a self congratulatory statement, but I'm headed somewhere with this statement. I am grateful. I praise the Lord. I give God all of the praise that the pastor of the upper room church of God in Christ, yours truly never fail in any way to the rhetoric. I didn't fall for the rhetoric of the black lives matter movement. Oh, the statement Black Lives Matter is 100% true. Uh, Blue lives matter. White lives matter. Brown lives matter. I believe all human life matter. And check this out. Unborn lives matter. That's why we fight for the unborn. But this movement, this Black Lives Matter movement, after hearing about the vicious beheadings and women being shot and killed and men being shot and killed and Israel being attacked, they released uh, uh, on X, uh, uh, formerly uh, Twitter, they released uh, uh, a picture with a, of a hang glider with the Palestinian flag, and in writing, uh, I stand with Palestine, that is all, that is it. I stand with Palestine, that is all, that is it. That's their position on little Jewish babies being beheaded, on human beings being killed viciously. It kind of reminds me of what President Obama said when uh, ISIS was killing Christians over uh, in the Middle East before ISIS was obliterated. And, uh, and on the National Day of Prayer, as Christians were being beheaded and drowned in cages, the then President of the United States defended ISIS and said, I remember uh, uh, that Christians have done atrocities too. Anybody remember the Crusades? He went back to the 1400s to defend something that ISIS had just done the other day. Oh, my friends, that's wickedness. 
And look at look at this. Uh, Black Lives Matter movement. They are pro pro uh, Palestine, pro pro Palestine. Many Black Lives Matter activists have taken to the streets across the U.S. in recent weeks to voice their support for pro Palestinian causes, including. Uh, calls against Israel's occupation of the West Bank and the U.S.-Israeli alliance. Well, when was this uh, article written? This article is an article from June twin, uh, June the 12th, 2021. So Black Lives Matter hadn't all of a sudden changed their minds and changed their positions and became... Um, a pro-Palestine. They've been pro-Palestine all the time. They they are and they've been anti-Israel all the time. And what I still wonder is how so many spirit feel people fail for their rhetoric. This is a wicked organization. And one thing is for certain, you can tell about what they did with their money that they weren't concerned about black lives. You can tell about uh, what they did for the HBCUs, that they were not concerned about black lives. You can tell uh, by just look at what they did uh, in the poor black communities to provide jobs, food, and shelter for homeless and struggling blacks. Oh, I get it. They've done nothing. So that tells you that they were not concerned about black people. And here they, here they are, but they've taken a position now, which is one that has gotten them in trouble with God. I say to everybody out there, everyone who's watching, your arms are too short to box with God. When you pick a fight with the God of the Bible, then you lose. You're, de you're defeated before the fight begins. I've read the last page of the book. I know how the story ends. We win. Good God Almighty, Jesus is coming back and he's going to straighten everything out. And I want to say to the pastors out there, to the saints out there who are watching me, how about asking God to refill you with the Holy Spirit and walk in divine discernment and don't fall for a thing just because the person who may be promoting the thing, but just because uh, their complexion is similar to yours. Pay attention, be wise, make sure that you do not get hoodwinked and bamboozled and, you know, so, so, it, should I say that you not get hoodwinked and bamboozled uh, again? All the number of pr uh, preachers and churches that had in their lobbies on their church grounds, uh, some hanging up in banners, some still do. Black Lives Matter, the movement, not the statement, the movement. The movement is, 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 is evil. And uh, anyone who can stand by these atrocities that took place in, in Israel, I'm telling you, there, there is something wrong with you. Uh, and there are people marching. I've seen on the news where they're marching around the world and they're blaming Israel for the attack. And they're challenging Israel's right to exist. And even those who promote, and I'm going to wrap this up, but those who promote a two-state solution. You know you can't have a two-state solution if uh, one uh, people has in its charter the belief that the other people do not have a right to exist. I mean, we can, there's a lot of things that we can disagree on and get along. You believing that I don't have a right to live is not one of them. If that's the way you feel about Brother Wooden, all bets are off because I want to live and I want you to live. These people do not believe that Israel has a right to exist. Iran wants to see Israel uh, driven uh, into the Mediterranean. But I'm here to say to all, that's not going to happen because the God of the Bible has plans for Israel. And as I close, I want to thank God for the leader of the Church of God in Christ, our presiding bishop, Bishop J. Drew Sheard. He's doing a fantastic job, and I love him, and I stand by him 100%. I love what he posted, and this was put out days ago. He said, as presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ, Incorporated my heart 
goes out to the state of Israel. We are deeply concerned for the well-being of its people. We believe in the power of love and peace and offer our prayers for peace, security, and prosperity. And it is his signature is affixed to this release. God bless our leader. God bless the church of God in Christ. And my friends, God bless the nation of Israel. God bless America. And God is going to bless you as you join me here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for... Bible study. That's right. Bible study. Now, I'm not leaving my man, Stephen. I have much more to be said uh, uh, as I follow the leading of the Lord. But tonight, tonight, my friends, I want to show you something. I want to show you unequivocally in the word of God where Thank God for this age of grace. Thank God for this Gentile age. Thank God that he's using people all over the world to promote the gospel. Thank God for uh, the time of the Gentiles. But I want to show you in the scripture that the God of the Bible has not changed his plans. The God of the Bible cannot be defeated. Even when people do not believe him, the Bible says, what if some do not believe the Bible said he yet abided faithful for he cannot deny himself. What God has planned shall be what God has declared shall stand. My God, and I'm telling you, I'm standing with the God of the Bible. Now, when you join us for Bible study, bring your Bibles. And we're going to study the word of the Lord together. I'll see you here tonight. And let us close it with a prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for Israel. We pray for Israel. We pray for Israel. We pray, oh God, for those families who have lost loved ones, those families who have suffered such atrocities, even those who uh, survived, and yet they have to deal with the things that they've witnessed and the things that they have seen. Oh God, bring peace. But even in the midst of bringing peace, God, bring judgment. God, perform your will. In the name of Jesus, thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Oh God, your will be done concerning the nation of Israel. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you and we praise you and we give you all of the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I'll see you tonight right here.